This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for April 21, 2023, flow technician killed in St. Andrew Home Invasion. A flow technician was stabbed to death at his home on Weymouth Drive in St. Andrew on Thursday morning. He has been identified as 45-year-old Claude McNee. It was reported that sometime after 9 p.m. on Wednesday, McNee, his common-law wife, and their daughter securely locked up the house and retired to bed. Police said around 3.10 on Thursday morning, the woman heard strange sounds and saw a man standing at her bedside with his face covered and made an alarm. McNee came to her assistance and a tussle ensued between him and the alleged intruder. Police said the tussle continued to the veranda, then shortly after, McNee came back inside the bedroom, holding onto his abdomen with what appeared to be blood. The common-law wife made a further alarm and the residents came to their assistance and called the police. Lawmen rushed McNee to the Kingston Public Hospital, where he succumbed while undergoing surgery. The body was later removed to the morgue. The Duhaney Park Police are investigating. Teen accused of robbing 13-year-old of cell phone charged. A 16-year-old was arrested and charged after he allegedly robbed a 13-year-old student on Hanover Street, Kingston, on Wednesday. Reports are that the juvenile approached the youngster and demanded his cellular phone. When his demand was not met, he and other students mobbed him, hitting him all over his body, and took his Samsung Galaxy A13 cell phone. He was subsequently pointed out to the police and arrested and charged. Four firearms seized at St. James Wharf Four firearms and a quantity of assorted ammunition were seized at the Seaboard Wharf in Freeport, Montego Bay, St. James on Thursday evening. Reports are that it is the sea wharf where 22 illegal guns and a larger quantity of ammunition were seized in January. In that incident, 21 Glock pistols and a Cobra revolver were found. A disassembled gun was found in a barrel at the sea wharf last month. Man wanted for rape among three arrested in St. Elizabeth Seas Police. Three men wanted for crimes including rape and a burglary were arrested following operations in St. Elizabeth on Wednesday. Head of the St. Elizabeth Police, Superintendent Kenneth Chin, told the news that the men were captured in targeted raids in three areas. On Wednesday, April 19, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m., a team of police officers from St. Elizabeth, Manchester, Clarendon and Area 3 headquarters carried out operations in several communities across St. Elizabeth in search of wanted men, prohibited weapons, dangerous drugs, stolen items, and lottery scamming devices. During the operations, the first targeted premises was searched in the community of Littlebridge in Parity, where one man who was wanted for simple larceny and unauthorized access of data was arrested, said Chin. The second targeted premises was at a prominent restaurant along Crane Road, where one male employee who was wanted for housebreaking and larceny was arrested. The third targeted premises was at a house in Pepper District in search of one man wanted for rape and grievous sexual assault, added Chin. He is appealing for continued partnership between residents and the police. The public is also reminded that to harbor a person who is wanted by the police can lead to you being charged criminally, said the police chief. Johnson Smith facing lawsuit over donations for failed bid to be elected Commonwealth Secretary General. A suit has been filed in the Supreme Court to compel the government to come clean over donations for the failed bid of Foreign Affairs Minister Kamina Johnson Smith to be elected Commonwealth Secretary General. Mrs. Johnson Smith ran an unsuccessful campaign to unseat the current Secretary General in a multi-million dollar effort that saw her traveling to several countries to shore up support from Commonwealth leaders. The costly endeavor was supported by donations from several quarters, including the Mosson Group, Grace Kennedy and the businessman Keith Duncan. An attempt was made by U.S.-based Jamaican Wilfred Rattigan through the Access to Information Act to obtain full disclosure on the donors and the amount of money pumped into the campaign of Mrs. Johnson Smith. 
The Ministry of Finance indicated that it was not in possession of any documents detailing the source of the donations. Attorney for Mr. Rattigan, Sophia Bryan, says the suit was filed so the state and its representatives can answer questions surrounding their failure to file the relevant documents in accordance with the applicable legislation. Opposition calls for power purchase agreements with JPS to be made public. The opposition is calling for power purchase agreements with the Jamaica Public Service Company to be made public. A joint select committee of parliament examining the Electricity Act has deemed it unacceptable that the energy minister is not a privy to the terms and conditions of agreements between JPS and any other entity. Opposition spokesman on energy, Philip Paulwell, says the cloak of secrecy surrounding the agreements needs to be lifted. The fundamental commercial terms that last for 20 years, because these power purchase agreements affect us for 20 years, we should have a policy that the public would have a right to see that. Because what the OUR is saying is that where there are breaches that are unremedied, then you as minister should revoke or should suspend. But you have a right to know what these are. You shouldn't have to be writing to the OUR to get a copy of the agreement between the JPS Co. and New Fortress when you have to issue the license. We, we need to consider that and to take a position that these agreements ought not to be private agreements between two enterprises. But you as minister, indeed the country, ought to be privy to the terms of these agreements that affect people's daily lives. to choose their next political representative. Scores of People's National Party supporters in Southeast St. Anne are calling for the delegates in the constituency to choose their political representative. They staged a protest yesterday morning after the party conducted a poll to determine who will contest the seat in the next general election after the planned resignation of Lisa Hanna. Ms. Hanna has indicated that she will not be contesting the next general election after narrowly retaining her seat in the 2020 general elections. Patricia Duncan Sutherland, Wavel Hines, and Dr. Kenneth Russell are seeking to represent the constituency. A constituency poll conducted last month saw Hines emerging as a favorite with 49% of the votes. Dr. Russell copped 9% and Mrs. Duncan Sutherland 8.5% with 33% offering no opinion. PNP supporter Vilma Wilson is adamant that the delegates should be the ones to choose the party's representative. If delegates are willing to vote, vote for who we want. And if we don't get who we want to vote for, we are not going to vote for anyone. We are not going to run any walk with any poll, for we cannot manage no poll, you know. For as I can say, Plenty of time they're carrying people in Southeast St. Anne to do what they want to do. So we say we need somebody that we can vote for. And as long as we can vote for that person, we're willing to vote. And if they don't allow it to vote for who we want to, they got to come and vote for who they want to. For we are not going to vote for them. Southeast St. Anne is so tired of people bringing in who they want to bring in. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.